you see the light goes down. Yeah. But it's not too bad like that. I don't want the, cam the lights in shot if possible. No, they're not going to be in shot. Okay. They're not at all, you can't see anything. Does that look better? Yeah, there's like a really weird like purple line though down the side of the screen. It's my good old mate sitting next to me. <laughs> no, there is. Shut there is. Up, don't even joke. No, there is. Shauna, there is. No, you can't. You won't see it now. <laughs> oh well, come sit next to me. <gasps> That's gone. Don't if you, you play that back, you'll see. So Shauna and I are literally lost for words, guys. I mean, what do you think that was? We're just setting up for a brand new video on Colossal Vids talking about ghosts and suddenly a purple line moves in from the right-hand side, stops, moves again a little bit, stops a second time and then an object flies in from the bottom of the screen and hits the right as you've just seen there. What do you guys think this is? We are so creeped out. Just show you guys again, purple line moves in, the camera's not moving at all, it's completely dead still and yet this is still moving. Then an object out of nowhere flies from the bottom of the screen and hits the right-hand side. We literally cannot explain this. Sean is clearly nowhere near it. I'm totally behind the camera, so there's no way I could be in that area whatsoever. And even if an object had been thrown, here it is slowed down, you would have heard it fall on the floor behind us. If someone off camera had thrown an object, you would have heard it hit the floor, yet you hear nothing. Here it is slowed down again and zoomed in. It looks like some kind of paper of some sort, but we had nothing out there with us apart from our phones for a light source and the camera. We had no paper, book or anything with us. Again, zoomed in, what is this? We are literally lost for words. It is great to have been able to have caught it on camera, but we literally have no explanation for it whatsoever. Here is one final still of it, and then let's just show you the footage in its whole once more. Can you see the light goes down? Yeah. But it's not too bad like that. I don't want the, cam the lights in shot if possible. No, they're not going to be in shot. Okay. They're not at all, you can't see anything. Does that look better? Yeah, there's like a really weird like purple line though down the side of the screen. It's my good old mate sitting next to me. <laughs> no, there is. Shut there is. Up, don't even joke. No, there is. Shauna, there is. For that object to move so erratic as well, and yet there to be no sound whatsoever associated with it, is what makes it even more creepy as far as I'm concerned. So guys, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. And then later on in the video, which you guys will see a bit further on, Shauna's talking about the fact that she used to have a computer in her spare room, which is where a lot of activity would occur, and she would hear taps on her computer keyboard when no one's in the house apart from her and she's downstairs. And literally, no other point in the video do you hear this, but as soon as she says she used to hear taps on her computer keyboard, you hear two taps. Have a listen. We used to have a um, computer in there, and I'd be on my own in the house, and I'd hear tapping on the keyboard from upstairs, and I'd hear tapping on the keyboard from upstairs, and I'd hear tapping on the keyboard from upstairs. And I'd hear tapping on the keyboard from upstairs. And I'd hear tapping on the keyboard from upstairs. We are clearly not moving at all. And also, if the bench that we were sitting on had been creaky in general, then you would have definitely heard more creaks than just two in a whole long video. You would not just hear two and then nothing else for an entire video. If it was creaky in general, you would have heard a lot more throughout the video than just two and then nothing else. So guys, what do you think? Please let us know in the comments below. We are seriously freaked out. Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, so, we was thinking about, as it's almost Halloween, we would do a spooky Halloween series yeah. um, for you guys on our channel for the next month leading up to Halloween. We've got some really good ideas for some videos coming up. We're going to hopefully visit a couple of abandoned places. Um, I've got um, a nice spooky mystery unboxing to do. I'm going to Thought Park Fright Night, so I'm going to vlog from there. Yep. Um, I'm going with my boyfriend and a couple of my friends, so that'll be cool. We're going to review the mazes and the rides, and I'm so excited. Yeah, um, I'll introduce that and she'll have to do that one. Yeah. Right. Okay, so tonight we're, we're going to just do a vlog um, about paranormal encounters we've had over the years. Um, which yeah. is going to make it a bit more realistic in a way, because we're currently sitting in Shauna's garden in the dark with some sort of lights and 
yeah, I mean, we hope you can see us okay. Um, we do have, I did have some more torches, but I kind of stupidly forgot them because I'm a bit of an idiot. So but, we're just um, going to sack down. We're using lights that we've got at the minute. So hopefully <laughs> next time it will look a little bit brighter, but hopefully it's not too bad at the minute. But yeah, as I was saying, we're sitting in Shauna's garden and it's a bit more, um, I don't know, maybe relevant to this video as well because... A lot of the encounters phew, that I've had over the years has happened actually has happened here. in my house. And I'm <laughs> convinced I saw something on the camera right at the start of this video that I've, I'm dying to check back when we finish recording. So. And hopefully if it's there, you're going to put it in the video, aren't you? Yeah, hopefully and then leave it open if it is there to see what you guys think, I guess. It, I just thought I saw like a purple line or kind of some sort of, I suppose they'd call it energy, maybe sitting, almost, well I say sitting, you can't really say that, I suppose, it's just a line, but like next to Shauna. And then when she turned the camera around to look and turn it back, it had gone, so. It does actually give me the chills a little bit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, paranormal encounters we've had over the years, and a lot for Shauna in particular, have been mm -hmm. quite recent. Yeah. Um, and yours would probably be a bit more intriguing as well, because it's happened, like, here. Yeah, it's quite, so. um, yeah, that's what's made me believe in the paranormal, I guess. I've always had a fascination for it ever since I was little, and mm -hmm. um, I've kind of grew up around it. My family, I would say they're quite spiritual, um, there's lots of psychic things that happen in my family, I'll, I'll explain it later. Um, so I've always believed in the paranormal, I've always like, you know, loved the idea of ghosts and demons and things like that. Um, <laughs> okay. I just find it really interesting, yeah. I'm just fascinated by it. Um, it's yeah. the unknown, it's yeah. totally the unknown isn't it? Definitely. No one's ever been able to fully prove, you know, yes or no. So, shall we? Yeah, I think encounters. you should. I think you should go because should she's told me a few things off camera, which I'm dying for you guys to find out about and let us know what you think, as well as your own personal encounters if you have any, because they are very, very creepy but very, very, very interesting. So, so you know, if you guys don't believe any of these stories, it's totally it's your opinion. That's yeah, absolutely if you're, fine. If you're sitting there thinking, do you know what? Why are they even doing this? It's just absolute rubbish. Like, oh my god. You are entitled. Then you're to entitled your to your opinion. Okay. Um. So the house I currently lived in, I've lived in since I was. I want to say about 10 um, and my parents divorced when I was 11 and that's when I started, I don't know, I started seeing like this black, it wasn't, it wasn't a shape, it wasn't a person, it was just black and if there was like loads of tension in the house and arguments it would be really big and I'd see it at the corner of my eye and then it would be gone, it was one of those sort of things but if there was like, if it was the house was just you know normal no tension, it was really small. And I saw it for quite a while and I didn't, you know, I didn't really think anything of it at the time. And then I started to see it a lot and it used to scare me. And I mentioned it to my mum one day and she said, oh, I know what you mean, I've seen it too. Um, anyway, so for the next few years we didn't really speak much about it um, until I was about 16. Um, I it then it, it sort of I don't know it came in like drips and drabs when I was 16 it was really bad and they say you know they say like um puberty makes ghosts apparently paranormal things come to life um more you know they become more attached when you go through puberty um but I was 16 at the time so you know um it, it got really bad and I used to hear like <laughs> my spare room basically is the room where all the activity used to happen we used to have a um, computer in there and I'd be on my own in the house and I'd hear tapping on the keyboard from upstairs and I knew nobody else was in the house and that used to really freak me out, I used to hate it. Um, it was one night when my mum went to Tesco's and um, I, the, tapping just, the tapping on the keyboard just wouldn't stop and I swear I had like scratching down the wall and literally I was in tears, I had to call my mum and I was like mum you've got to come home, I can't, I'm just, I can't deal with it anymore. Anyway, um, so then my mum called my cousin, who's part of a spiritualist church, and she told my mum to say this prayer for me, and basically said if I ever felt like it was near me or I felt uneasy, I just had to tell it to go away. So um, I did that. Anyway, so my mum used to say this prayer for me. She has to do it every night. And to this day, she still will not tell me what that prayer was because she's really worried that if she tells me, it, whatever it was will come back. Even though, to be honest... It still is here. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, um, but it doesn't. I don't feel um, as scared anymore as I used to. If that makes sense, I don't know. Whatever it is, I feel is attached to me, but I don't feel scared of it. You don't feel threatened by no. it. No, I used to when I was younger, but now, now I don't. Um, anyway, so yeah, my mum refuses to talk, to talk about it in the house. She will not have any of it. That's why, primarily while we're outside, because my mum's inside, she hates talking about the house. Yeah. She hates talking about the encounters because she's seen it too. So, 
I sort of didn't, it sort of like went away, I didn't really, f didn't feel anything, didn't see anything for ages, um, till I was 20, um, no, I must have been younger than that, how long, how, no, I must have been 19, um, because James is 25 now. <laughs> I heard like the shuffling behind me, sorry. So when I was 19, so um, I've been with my boyfriend for five years now and the first time he ever came around my house, we were in, my, we were in the spare room because um, we had a sofa in there, we had a TV in there. So I, I put on a, this is the first time he'd ever been around my house. So I put a movie on, I paused it, went to the toilet, I came back. He is in my bedroom shaking and crying and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Um, and he was like, he was like, I don't know what it was, but I just, I just felt something like, I saw like this black shadow, like black thing go across the mirror, and I felt like it was coming towards me in the TV, and I, I just had to get out of that room. I just couldn't be in there. And I was like, oh my god, because you know I've had other boyfriends before, and nobody's ever mentioned it before. But the fact that he saw something and felt it, I was just, and we never, we, I hadn't even spoken about it with my mum since then. The fact that he brought it up, and you know what? To this day, he hates this bedroom. He won't go in there. Um, it's been my mum's bedroom twice, she's moved in and out of there, and he won't go in there, he's, he's petrified of it. Um, that's, that, was, that was probably another big encounter. The next one was pretty recent actually, this is probably one of the most recent ones. Okay. Um, my mum's partner's called Jim, and um, I got in from, probably from James's one night, and, um, and he's like, oh, Shauna, you've already been home? And I was like, no, I haven't. And he said, no, I've just seen your legs go up the stairs. This creeps me out, this does. And I was like... Because basically, from my lounge, you can see, like, my stairs opposite. If you're sitting on the sofa, you can see the stairs. You might have seen it in one of our videos. You know, often my door's shut, but when it's open, you can see the stairs. Anyway, um, he was like, yeah, I've seen your legs go up the stairs. And I was wearing black leggings. He was like, I've just seen your black legs go up, like, black legs go up the stairs. And I was like, no, Jim, I've literally just got in. He doesn't believe in any of this. He's always said it was rubbish and it was crap and nonsense. Mm. So for him to see that, that was kind of, that was kind of freaky. Kind of a big thing as well. Yeah. If he doesn't believe in that stuff, he and doesn't. Then, and then for him to say that to you. And probably my most recent encounter was about four months ago now. Um, basically, my brother said that he had this dream and he saw this like black mass standing at the end of his bed, um, and then suddenly the black mass came towards him and he woke up. And he said he, he just saw the he just saw black at the end of his bed, so he like he hid under his covers, and then his TV like turned on and off like three times, white noise, you know when you, and Jim's banging on the wall going Ryan turn your TV off it's really loud, and Ryan's under the covers thinking like I haven't turned my TV on, and he told us in the morning, and it was just really weird because that's the first time my brother's ever seen it, you know my brother's 21 now, you know he must have been what 13 when it all I don't know 13 possibly nine when it all started mm. um so for him to only see it now i know it, it's still it's still there but my mum won't have in, won't talk about it in the house so we're outside like literally if i'm on my own in the house i will put on like a youtube video or music or something i won't i won't list, have just silence walking around my house and if i go to the bathroom you know like if i go to any room i will shut the door because mm. i just don't i don't want to turn around and it be on the landing or anything it must be like because obviously you're a horror fan, obviously, so it must yeah. be tricky if you're watching one and it's getting dark. People always say, oh, well, it's obviously your horror movies that make you feel all this, blah, blah, blah. It's really not, because I was not watching horror films when I was, like, ten. No. No, you really... Right. And I know, I, I've known Shauna, you know, a long time now, and I know for a fact that she wouldn't make anything like this up. I, I just know. I just know. There'd be no point in making things like this up. I mean, it's what I've experienced. If exactly. I think until you've experienced it... Totally. You probably don't believe it yourself. And you in a way, to... you probably can't sit there and say it's all rubbish if you've not experienced anything because that's just going with what you've heard mm. from other people. You need to be able to make your own mind up and say, look, you do or you don't. Exactly. But make it based on your own experiences, not what you hear other people say and what you think's the, the you know, the trend and what's cool the cool thing to say. Exactly. Because until you've experienced it and understood it, you're never gonna really know and you've no. not really got the place to say in my opinion. <laughs> I've always been interested, yeah, absolutely in the paranormal. It's for me, it's one of the most fascinating things that I've ever sort of had the um opportunity to delve into and, and sort of explore. I remember God, this is going back like God, like six or seven years ago, something like that. Um, I used to work with someone um, who was interested in all that kind of thing. She said to me one day, like, why don't you come with me to this like psychic slash medium clairvoyant evening sort of thing. Apparently this guy can tap into what's called your um, 
like your your doorkeepers or um, your spirit guides and you mm. can get to know them and, and they're basically there to kind of if you believe in that stuff they're meant to stand in front of you and deflect all evil away if yeah. it happens to present itself apparently i've got a, a, a spirit me a spirit guide. guide if i can get my words out called george Aww. this is just what i've been told if you believe in that kind of thing and he he's, he's with me wherever i go and if anything happens that's that's negative or evil he's apparently there protecting me and making sure it doesn't go too far or it's not dangerous sort of thing yeah. so he's kind of there it's kind of like a, a kind of like an angel almost i suppose behind me um and apparently when I, I used to go there like um every week for a while and um he used to get us to like um bloody floodlight floodlight am i going so Dan's just going to go and flick the floodlight on. I have to admit, I feel a bit funny after talking about my house. Well, it's good exercise, isn't it? I kind of want to cry a bit. And we used to sit in a circle and he would get us to like, almost like meditate and he would just basically say to us like allow yourself to like completely relax and open up what's called your chakras which is apparently these like, um, they're like different parts, like light bulbs all around your body and you have to imagine that like they're turning on and that you're allowing like a, a flow of like white positive light to kind of flow from your feet up towards your head. You open yourself up to things and you become more sensitive and then the idea is if you keep your eyes closed for long enough um, the idea is to just let, you, let your mind wander and then you have to explain to him afterwards after about, I think it's about five minutes, what you saw and if you went on a journey, where did you go, who did you see, was you on a beach, da, da, da. and the idea is you'd see yourself, you wouldn't put your thoughts in your own head, you would just totally relax and it would just take you somewhere and it freaked the hell out of me because I was doing it and literally I was like a film, I could just see myself doing things That's weird, isn't it? that like I never thought I would... I would be doing sort of thing and then I was able to actually tell this guy after sort of the five ten minutes was up a whole story of that I did this and I saw this that kind of got me even more interested and then I remember another thing about like this whole like outer body experience that some people claim to have where apparently mm -hmm. if you lay still for long enough and you focus and concentrate enough you can actually feel like you're not actually in your body anymore and honestly and I, I, I kid you not I'm not I'm not making this up I mean you can make, make up your own mind you're gonna I suppose I have to take my word for it anyway but lying on my bed one night and I'd only just heard about you could, you could have this apparently and I was like I want to see if it would happen to me honest to god I laid there and I totally relaxed not an inch of me was like tense closed my eyes after about 10 minutes I felt honest to god like I was raising up off the bed like I was elevating and honest to god next thing I knew in my mind I was floating above my own body and I looked down I could see myself with my eyes shut and I was so scared that I'd seen this like vision, if you like, that I nearly fell off the bed. I was like, that's it. And I ran out of the room. I was like, I'm not doing that again. Fuck that. And honest to God, I could see myself like, it was like I was floating above myself, watching myself laying there with my eyes shut. And like that, that terrified the hell out of me. So that's, I stopped doing that kind of thing as well. Um, and then there was another one where like you can relax your body and apparently there's this thing where it's almost like an automatic handwriting. You put uh, a pen. Yeah, I'd like to try that. You put a pen in your hand and you well, keep it completely still and you ask if anyone's around to move the pen and mm. you spell out words and stuff. And basically my nan sadly passed away a good few years ago and obviously it hit the family hard and stuff like that. And I was so close to her so I've never really got over it. Obviously I never will, I don't think. But I remember... Um, I was convinced that she was always looking out for us from obviously from heaven and stuff. And I remember asking her one day, like I opened myself up and I was like, um, you know, if you're there, you know, move the hand. And apparently, if, if they make you draw a circle, it's a yes. And if it's a, an open circle, oh, it's, really? it's it's a no or something. Or it was like a method that I got taught. It might not oh, be well okay. known. And honestly, I was like, nanny there, and it was like circle. Oh, and it was like, um, are you what, are you looking out for us? Circle sort of thing. And I did it with my mum in the house and she burst into tears because she like, was really interested in all that kind of thing. Um, and it just seemed to work. I mean, people can say, oh, yeah, you're moving your hand, whatever, it's subconsciousness. But I, 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 as far as I'm aware, I, didn't, I, I made every effort to not move it and it would just go by itself. And it was freaky, but I was convinced it was my nan answering my questions for me and stuff like that. So it's kind of a nice feeling. I've, That's I've, lovely. That's a lovely story. Things have happened in my house, but again, it all seems positive. Like my 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 TV's turned itself off, my TV's turned itself on. When I'm nowhere near the remote control and I'm nowhere near the TV, I'll be like on my laptop, and then it will just go, and it will just spring into action. It will just go blue, which is like when you've got no signal or no channel. Um, and I'm like, okay, the remote control is at the far end of the room. I'm not sitting on anything. Like, how the hell has that happened? Mm. So little things will happen, or I walk past something and I'll think like that definitely wasn't facing that direction when I first came in the room, and no one's been in since, and I know that because my mum's upstairs and everyone else is out of the house. 
like I, just an item will be in a certain position and I'll know for a fact it's there and then I'll come back through the, the room like a second time and it's facing a different direction so oh, okay. you just little things it's not major in, in my house it's very subtle it's almost like if it is my nan it's like she does a little bit and then she does nothing for like ages yeah. and then she does another thing so to say like you know don't forget me I am, I am still here that's really lovely but she doesn't go overboard because she doesn't want to scare me but it's like yeah. subtle but she wants she does it every so often just so that I don't forget I've seen like what I think is like white light shooting across like like my conservatory and stuff like that where I've seen things out the corner of my eye I looked up and just seen like the tail end of something move um again it could either be that I'm tired or I suppose it could be a rational explanation for some of it yeah. but I mean the TV is. turning on I can't I definitely can't yeah for me it's like it's, it's it just seems all positive it doesn't happen enough to scare me yeah and I wouldn't really want it to obviously no. But um, all positive, yeah. I used to go to like abandoned places anyway quite regularly with some other mates that I still see but not too often. Um, and we've been to some really, really, really evil, scary, nasty places that have got backstories of like devil worship and satanic rituals and just really, really just horrifying stuff. But I've... Basically, I, I went because like, everyone was like, oh, don't be a wuss. And I was like, well, I just wanted to kind of yeah. prove that I was brave. But basically, there is a place um, called Cold Christmas. Oh, you went to Cold Christmas. So you've heard of it then? Yes. You've been, have you been I there? I have not been to Cold Christmas. So, I've heard too many bad stories. And I'm not... Yeah. I've only been I've... there once. But basically, it's, what it is, it's a single tower. It's just a single church tower. There's no um, extension to it. Uh, there's no proper like church main entrance, like you like a like a um, another bit to it. It's just a single literal literally a tower, and you have to walk quite a way up to it as well. Basically, you park in like a. It's not even necessarily a car park. It's just like an open bit of land. Yeah. But then you still have to walk ages to get up there, which makes it even more freaky because the apprehension builds more because you've got more of a journey up there. And then when you start to see the tower kind of come into view in the distance, obviously, even in the darkness, you can still see things. Um, it just, you get more and more nervous. Um, so anyway, the first time my mate went, this is before I went with, with them, um, there was sheep in the field and uh, they were making loads of noise. And they went into the tower and literally, they went as they went in, literally they just felt like an icy chill. And suddenly not even kidding you the sheep apparently all of them just stopped dead and the noise that they were making it was constant it was like a regular mm. thing just went stopped stopped they just made no noise and then when they came out of the tower they started again that's really weird so that was so you can imagine now i'm going with them like kind of like a second time round. i having heard that already i'm already like nervous. i wouldn't have gone i don't know i'm sorry i would not have gone well it, it, it was it wasn't too long ago but it wasn't like too recent. But yeah, I mean, looking back now, I probably wouldn't go again. But basically, when I did go, it was also with um, a guy that claimed he was like a, a bit of a sensitive and he could kind of like open up to things and apparently could see things. So anyway, we went in there and uh, I got to the tower and I was like, I don't think I can do this. I'm just, I just don't think I've got it in me. I was just, I was just feeling so, so nervous. And then suddenly I just felt all right. It was really, but I went from being really nervous to feeling okay. So I thought, all right, I'll step in. And basically you step in for like a hole in the wall because the door is like, like totally, you can see there's a door there, but obviously it's locked and it's like got stuff growing over it. So you can't actually use it. But someone's basically got a kind of kicked in or over the years kind of worn away, like a hole at the back that you climb through. So you go in there and basically at the back in a corner, there's a hole that you have to climb through. You have to crawl through it because like you've got like a brick wall and then, Sorry, I'm not doing the camera. Brick wall, and there's a hole at the bottom. You have to crawl through and then stand up, and there's a secret staircase that goes up to the top. So anyway, we were, we stepped in there, and I still felt that fine. Sounds lovely. We we stepped in there, and I still felt fine. And then my mate was like, "Do you want to go up the stairs now?" I was like, "Where are they?" He's like, "They're through that tunnel." And as soon as I like looked in, I was like, "Wait, just no. this wave of fear." And I stopped in my tracks and was like, "Actually, no, I don't feel nope. I can do this. Nope, I really don't a think I've got it in nope. me. Yeah, totally. And apparently they've gone up there before, but I was like, do "You know what? If I go up there." And like something happens and I fall down the stairs or I run down. I've still got to get to the bottom and I'm still in the building. I can't just run down the stairs and I'm out. When I get to the bottom, I'm still in this open space, still within the tower. So I was like, no. And also when you get to the top of the stairs, you walk forwards, and it's a ledge and then nothing. Fuck that. So you just fall back down to the bottom. So if you got to the top of the stairs and something happened, again, danger, you'd fall and fall to your death. So I was like, I'm not going to go anywhere where I could get scared and fall back down the stairs or get to the top and then like end up falling over the ledge. I was like, I'm just not doing it. I just, it's just not happening. And I was just terrified. Anyway, I, I, ran, I ran out. I literally I jumped through the hole, got back out the tower, and my heart was just racing. And I was like, can we go, please? Can we just go? I just can't. I can't, I can't deal with it. Um, so we started walking back. 
And anyway, this guy that I went with, who claims he can sense things, was like, I don't want to alarm you guys. And I thought he was joking and, like, having a laugh, because sometimes he can be a bit... But, like, I'd never seen him, like, look so scared and so serious. He was like... He made us stop dead. He was like, guys, I don't want to alarm you. Don't feel scared. Don't don't sort of make any sudden movements. I don't movements. know if want to hear the end of this now. I'm a bit scared. But there is a girl floating... She's only she's like a couple of meters away from us. She's not too far, but she's not too close. She's just basically following us. She's just a little bit intrigued as to what we're up to. She's basically f floating behind us, just basically like a, almost like a gentle nudge to say like go go because you don't want to stay much longer. It's not good here. Just go. It's not like a bad spirit. It's just like a, a young girl that's just come out of the tower and she's saying guys you just just need to go sort of thing she was like so don't don't feel scared but she's she's not far behind us and she's looking at us so obviously i turned around i can see nothing and he was like honestly trust me i wouldn't lie to you guys she is there but it's nothing nasty just keep walking don't stop what nothing don't scare me Sorry. just keep walking and um, we'll be fine obviously i'm like i've latched on to like this this girl that i was with i was just literally i wouldn't let go of her i was like just go 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 so we picked up the pace a little bit and then eventually the, the guy that said that she was there turned around and said, right, she's just turned around, she's going back now towards the tower. She's happy that we've gone far enough away and she's now going back to her place of rest, I guess it is. And she apparently turned around and, and floated back to the tower again. She was as if to say, like, go, go. Aww. So I, I feel that's kind of like a positive, like almost like say, like, guys, you know, you shouldn't have been here, but just go, you know, you're better off if you go. So there's also another place called Clop Hill Church. And um, obviously, people might have heard of that. One, you may have done. Fair. This video goes out to a everybody, lot, yeah. so you might not have heard of it. So you might not been be too. To, you might have been to Cold Christmas. You might have been to Clopper. If you have, let us know underneath. Yeah. Um, have you got any so, experiences? <sighs> you right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay, fine. right, Dan, Can we just stop? It's fine. No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, uh, no. It, stop it. Stop. No, no, no. There's nothing there. If you move your head like that, the branches. Can you see the branches? Like, do that. Do that. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so Clubwood Church, yeah, it's basically um, a church that is in ruins and it's not used anymore. And um, it's just an open um, building. So it's got no roof. Um, apparently the roof got excavated years ago and it's now been used in, like, various pubs around the area. This is what I've been told, like, to, to build, like, extra staircases. The wood was taken from the roof and has been broken up and used in various staircases and bits around pubs in the area. So the wood's been taken off and, and reused. Um, basically, the story behind it, quickly, is that, um, basically, back in the day when it was built, it actually faces the wrong way. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the one that faces the other, no, um, south, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. And it was apparently never meant to face that way and it meant... Um, bad things so or, or evil yeah. Stuff. yeah but it, but it, it's not too bad I mean, we went there in the day mostly so it wasn't too bad you talk about asylums you've talked about asylums before not on camera but I love, a, I love asylums she loves asylums I know it's weird but I do have a fascination with mental health <laughs> there is an asylum that isn't too far from where I am me and my mates were doing some research one day about places not not too far from us that apparently have been abandoned derelict stuff like that and we've been to obviously Clopple Church and, and Cold Christmas and that's that they're famous places for that kind of thing because people have been there a lot anyway so we knew it'd be fine but this one we hadn't heard really anyone else that had gone there so it's this mental asylum that was in service years ago obviously to, to um, house mental patients and uh, we looked at some old photos and it is really creepy and they've got like an old swimming pool that used to be there and they've got all the old equipment that was there and like an old kitchen and stuff so then one day we're like right let's go so there was like four of us i think that it was amazing we went there and we pulled up in the car park and basically um there's like a, a gate and then a post and the gate's always locked but you can get around it there's like a post there's like a gap so we kind of went through as we got out of the car this guy who was like standing in his garage watching us kind of just lit up a cigarette and we just saw this flame come out of nowhere and this guy's just standing there living and he's like um what are you guys up to frick the life out of us so that was a great start we were just like oh we're just going for a walk like round there and he was like oh, all right don't do anything too um scary or that i wouldn't do or whatever and we were like oh my god that is like okay right so that made us feel great anyway so we walked past him and he kind of went away and then we basically went through the gate and started walking down towards this kind of asylum itself there's quite a walk down there when you get there it's basically lots of different little buildings scattered around so anyway we decided we were going to go in the various buildings and um, explore apparently there was used to be a swimming pool there and we made it our mission to try and find it and we never found it although two of my mates reckon they did but i wasn't with them and uh, so we was kind of walking around and stuff and we were just hearing like creaks and like bangs and stuff and it, you can imagine we were like jumping all over the place oh, yeah. um, but it was just really really freaky the scariest bit was when we were coming out of there this is what this is like the creme de la creme we came out of there 
and um, was like, right, let's get back in the car. And I was convinced something was following us that wasn't of this, of this earth. And we were walking back because we'd had enough and um, right at the end. And uh, I just said to my mates, like, I, I'm sorry if I'm trying to, like, I'm not trying to scare you guys. I'm not trying to, but I just, I'm, I just can't help. I keep thinking there's someone walking behind us. I kept hearing creaks and snaps, twigs and stuff. Anyway, we got in the car and <laughs> my mate was like, we're going to pull forwards and we're going to reverse back up to the gate again so that I can get a better angle in the car so I could get out easier. Oh my God. So we, we went forwards and he went to reverse back and I happened to look out the back window just just as a last little glance, like for luck I suppose. And honest to God, I kid you not, I saw a white figure, clear as day, walk past the gate and I saw his arm swing past the gate. I saw shoulders, I saw a torso, I saw an, one arm, just one arm, I didn't see any legs, it was almost like it floated and just went literally, not, not too quickly, just quite at an even pace, flew past the gate that we were just pulling out away from. So obviously I freaked out, but I thought, I bet no one else has seen it. I bet I've just been seeing things. So I turned around and I was like, you guys are never going to guess what I've just seen, but like, it's probably just me. So anyway, but I said, but honest to God, I've just seen a white figure float past the gate as we're pulling away. Because by this point, we were now back on the main road. And I was just, apparently I was white. Apparently I, I was shaking. Like, my, my eyes were just wide. Like, and I, I was breathing erratically and I couldn't sit still, apparently. Anyway, turns to my mate that's sitting next to me and she goes... I'm glad I'm not the only one that just saw that. Oh, that's creepy. That's giving me chills. I'm genuinely have chills now. So, once she said that, that was it. Yeah. I could. I, I just literally. I just was like. I, I was just shaking. I couldn't like. The, some, some of the other guys that were in the car had to calm me down because I was just like. Because I thought I was seeing things. And then when my mate was like, I saw. I definitely saw it too. And I said, What did you see? And she was like, I saw and described exactly what I'd seen. And I was like. Hmm. You got Let's go. information. And at that point, like, I was so freaked out that my mate, I actually forced my mate to put it, put like more of a, on the gas pedal. Like, mm. just go, quick, quick, just go, just get out of here. And I've not been back since. No, I don't blame you, to be honest. But wow, that was um, creepy. So I've seen so a torso and one arm float past a gate. Anyway. Whether or not you guys believe in that stuff. Yeah, but. I mean, obviously all the stories are our own. Personal experiences. Yeah. It's your, completely your opinion. If you don't believe in them, that's cool with us. We don't mind. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any ideas of what you guys want to see in our Halloween series, um, hopefully all of our videos now are going to be paranormal um, related leading up to Halloween. Um, and so if you like this video, um, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our page, and like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Colossal Vids. And we will see you next week. Or at some point when we film another video. Bye! What else are we doing as well? <laughs> We're considering maybe doing an investigation somewhere. Oh, yeah. An, We're official, gonna... an official maybe yes. paranormal investigation. Um, there's lots of like things where you can go on overnight ghost hunts and stuff. Mm. Um, but we don't know if we're going to be allowed to video. Yeah. So we're going to contact the people, obviously, first, see if we can video. If we can, then we're going to do that as well. So um, stay tuned. We've got a lot of Halloween stuff, spooky stuff coming up in the next few videos. So we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. See you Bye. later. Have a good one. Uh. And finally, after we finished filming, Shauna and I picked up our phones to turn off the torches on them because we were using them for a light source. Now, mine was on about 22% battery and Shauna's was on a good amount of battery as well. And suddenly... They both died. It was the most bizarre thing. I mean, how can a phone die if it's on 22% battery unless you physically turn it off? And I pressed nothing on the phone. I had it in my hand, but I didn't press a single thing on it at all. And it died. And it had 22% battery. How is that physically possible? So again, I'm thinking, was there an entity near us that was feeding off an electronic device? Because they say that ghosts can feed off electronic devices and drain them. So was a ghost nearby and it drained my battery to try and you know, present itself sort of thing in the ether. Anyway, we went back in the house. I just accepted the fact that my phone had died as well as Shauna's. We put them down on the table and I kid you not, guys, honestly, we picked them back up again suddenly and they came back on again. And it, my, my phone still said 22% battery and Shauna's came back onto the amount of battery she'd had before it died the first time. And honest to God, they just came back on again. It was almost like we came back in the house we was away from any ghosts now. They'd gone away. So, you know, they weren't affecting our devices anymore, our phones. So they were just going to come back on again because they weren't affecting it anymore. So if something was there, 
you know, with the object that you've seen at the start of this video, which is going to come your own minds up about something seems like it was there and it was feeding off our phone battery as well, affecting that. So electronic devices were being affected and then you can see the stuff on the camera visually. It all seemed to add up to, for me personally, suggest that there was some kind of spirit there um, that was affecting things and was trying to present itself. Um, and if that's the case, then it is absolutely amazing. But again, like I said, guys, you are more than welcome to make up your own minds. It's there for you to, you know, decide what you think. Let us know in the comments below. I mean, we are really excited, but also still creeped out at the same time. But all these different things that have happened, you know, it just would make sense if that was the case. But, you know, make your own minds up and let us know. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Oh, <laughs>